The property manager's two main objectives are to maintain the value of the property and uh, minimum expenses, avoid losses for the owner, get good tenants to occupy space. It's definitely a generate, yep, and generate and produce income from the property. Following items will be considered an enroachment. Fence that crosses over the property line between two different owners. Yep. A lender is adding a one twelve of annual taxes and insurance to the bar. Monthly payment. These prepaid taxes and insurance are kept in a. Um, I'd say escrow account. Yep. A lender is adding one twelve of the annual taxes and insurance to a borrower's monthly pay mortgage payment. The, these prepaid taxes and insurance are kept in a. Impounds or escrow account. What is this? A standard title insurance policy insure against. I'd say any recorded title defects or liens. Yep. What is a standard title insurance policy insure against any recorded title defects or liens? Which of the following normally triggers an alienation clause? Something about mortgage failure to pay mortgage. Yeah, failure to pay mortgage payments. No, sale or assignment of the mortgaged property. Which the following normally triggers an alienation clause: the sale or assignment of the mortgaged property. A broker has a property listed for 110000 A buyer tells the listing broker that she would like to make an offer for 90000 What should the listing broker do? Tell the buyer that the broker... Tell, tell the buyer that the seller has told the broker nothing. Nope. Tell the buyer that the broker will present the offer to the seller. Correct. A seller lists a property with one broker but reserves the right to sell it herself without paying a commission. Seller list the property one broker but reserves the right to sell it herself without paying commission. This is an example of a, I'd say, an exclusive agency listing. Correct. A property that has an easement crossing it is called a. An easement crossing it. Uh, this would be a dominant tenement, I'd say. Shit, servient tenement, a property with that has an easement crossing it. Okay. As a servient tenement. Water rights are generally covered under the federal guidelines. Some states are cover some states cover water rights under riparian and literal laws in the absence of specific guidelines. Water rights are generally governed by I'm thinking eminent domain. No, it's not definite. It can't be eminent domain. Police power? I'd say police power. Prior appropriation, okay. Water rights are generally under, covered under federal guidelines. Some states cover water rights under repairing and literal laws in the absence of specific guidelines. Water rights are generally governed by prior appropriation. A property did not abut a water where the owner established a beneficiary used to the state under prior appropriation. How could the owner gain access to the water? Uh, easement by prescription. I don't know. Easement by necessity, I'd say. Go all go to the neighbor and negotiate an easement. Wow. And so the following would not be a protected class under the federal fair housing law. Not be a protected class. So which would we'll just say we'll just think about what would be a protected class. Children under eighteen is protected from 
just protect it. Person with a mental handicap. Correct. A person you currently using illegal substances would not be protected under class of federal fair housing. On July 1st, a contractor started work on August 15th. The work was completed. The general contractor was paid, but the material vendor was not. On October 1st, the material vendor filed a mechanic lien. What is the effective date of the mechanics lien? July 1st. Yep, that's right. Under the federal fair housing law, which of the following phases would be illegal in advertising? Adult building. Yep. Which of the following properties would not appraise? Would an appraiser not depreciate? Um, I say vacant land to be used for commercial property because land can't be depreciated. Yeah, land does not depreciate due to the mat. Yep, that's right. Circle it normally applies to which of the following situations. A residential property with a buried oil tank. Yep. What is a person who <clears throat> have who can sign legal papers for another person? Hmm. Power of attorney. Yep. Which of the following types of listings would give the broker the least protection for receiving a commission? Which of the following types of listings would give the broker the least protection for receiving commission? An open. Yep, an open list. Yep. An offer to purchase contract has been presented to a seller. Which of the following statements is true regarding the offer? An offer to purchase contract has been presented to the seller. Which of the following statements is true regarding the offer? Any time prior to the conveyance of an acceptance or rejection. Let's just see. Yep, it could be withdrawn any time prior to conveyance and acceptance or rejection. A judgment against a seller has been recorded on the public record. A buyer is interested in purchasing the seller's property but does not know about the judgment. The buyer is said to have. A buyer's interest. Okay, so a judgment against the seller has been recorded on the public record. A buyer's interested in purchasing the seller's property but does not know about the judgment. I say constructive notice. Yeah, any item recorded on the public record provides constructive notice to the public. Which of the following would be exempt under the Federal Fair Housing Law of 1968? Okay, what is the phone be exempt? Okay, individual selling a personal residence which is not advertising that discriminated only that discriminated only on the basis of national origin. That's not exempt. An individual selling a personal residence who does not discriminate in advertising. A private club that was annexed. Uh, I'd say. I'd say B. Yeah, an individual selling a personal residence who does not discriminate in advertising. An agreement between a seller and broker where a broker is hired to sell the seller's property is referred to as an agreement between a seller and broker where the broker is hired to sell the seller's property referred to as a listing agreement. I'm pretty sure. Yep. A broker talks to a seller about listing a property for sale. The seller won't just list with this one broker, but tells the broker that if he finds a buyer for the property, the seller will pay a commission. This would be an 
not an exclusive agency, not exclusive rights to sell, not a let listing, so an open listing. Yep, an open listing. God, there we go. The Federal Fair Federal Housing Administration's loan program operates in a similar fashion to I wanna say insurance companies. I'm going to say insurance companies. Yeah, insurance companies. The federal, housing, the federal Housing Administration's loan program operates in a similar fashion to insurance companies. Three agents made, uh, made listing proposals to a seller. The first agent did a market analysis and came up with the price of 179000 The second agent did a market analysis and came up with the price of 181000 The third agent did not do a market analysis and told the seller it should sell for around 198000 The ser The third seller did not get the listing, but the property sold for 174000 The third agent violated the duty of... Care? Yeah, care. That's what it was. The duty of care is using the knowledge and skill, but but by but not by not doing a market analysis, the agent hurt the seller. Yeah. An assumed loan in a real estate transaction would appear on a closing statement as a so a loan. A loan on a real estate transaction will appear on a closing statement as a Think about a loan. So the loan, the buyer needs to get a loan. Hmm. So I'd say that would be a debit to the buyer. Yeah, because they got to get a loan to pay for the house. So it would be a debit to the buyer. Hmm, debit to the buyer, credit to the seller. So think about a loan. So I'm guessing a loan, the buyer is getting debited. No, 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 no. The buyer is going to be the one receiving the loan. The buyer is receiving a loan. So it would be a credit to the buyer. And then the seller is going to pay off their, the rent remainder of their loan. So it'd be a debit to the buyer or a debit to the seller. And it'd be a credit to the buyer. Yup. Yup. Yeah. The sell, okay. So the seller still owes, owes on the loan. Hence the debit to the seller. The buyer receives the loan money to help buy the property. Hence the credit to the buyer. Okay. I got it. A lender is going through a foreclosure process. The lender, however, would like to resell the property as soon as possible. The lender should seek a... Mm. Deed in law of foreclosure. Yeah, there we go. Deed in law of foreclosure. A deed in law of foreclosure foreclosure allows the lender to forego the foreclosures process and receive the deed to the property from the buyer. This is the quickest way for the lender to receive title to the property and resell. A buyer was considering purchasing a new home that the listing broker was aware had been built on a toxic waste dump. What is the listing broker owed to the buyer? He owes disclosure, I'd say. He has to disclose that, yeah. Disclosure of toxic waste dump is required, yep. A fixture would be defined as... An item that is attached to a building. Trade fixture would be personal property and a regular fixture would be like real property or personal property 
turned into real property. So I'd say, yeah, an item that is attached to a building. When a change is needed in the contract, the best way to accomplish this would be with a amendment. Okay, yep. Some out of towners had inherited some property. They contacted a local broker to sell the property out of the town. The out of towner town owners would wanted to list the property for fifty thousand. The brokers knew that similar properties in the area were selling for eighty thousand. What should the broker do? Suggest a mark. Okay, so require nope. List the property fifty thousand. Nope. My the property personally because of the property. No, suggest a market announcer decided to estimate current value of the property. I'm pretty sure. Yep, so that's a market analysis for the seller to estimate the current value of the property. How would a, how would a loan origination fee normally show up in a closing statement? A loan origination fee. And so. A fee is charged by the lender. So a loan origination fee is like a fee charged by the lender for originating and processing a loan. So the lender is pretty much the person lending out the loan. So they're lending the loan to a buyer. So It'll be a debit to the buyer. No entry to the seller. I'm pretty sure. Debit to the buyer, no entry to the seller. Yep. The buyer normally pays for pays the loan origination fee. Therefore, it is a debit to the buyer and no entry to the seller. One and two are incorrect. That there is no entry to the seller since the buyer only pays this fee. So the buyer only pays this fee. That makes sense. The seller doesn't have to pay this. Which of the following would be an example of tying a contract, of a tying contract with a broker? A group of bro brokers setting a common commission rate. That's illegal. A broker referring to buyers to a particular lender, requiring a builder to list a finished house with a broker after buying a lot in the subdivision. A broker listing a seller's house for sale and then finding the, the seller a bigger house. What's the buying that area? Tying contract with the broker. Hmm. Hmm. Requiring a builder to finish. Requiring a builder to fit to list a finished house with a broker after buying a lot in the subdivision. A broker listing a seller's house for sale and then finding. Uh, Requiring a builder to list a finished house with a broker after buying. I'm not sure. Okay, that's right. Yeah, tying a tying contract is tying two is tying together two unrelated activities. A builder being required to list with a broker in order to purchase a lot in the subdivisions will be an example of this. Tying contracts are usually illegal. Okay, so requiring a builder to list a finished house with a broker after buying a lot in the subdivision, which of the following would be an example of tying contract with the broker, requiring a builder to fit to list a finished house with the broker after buying a lot in the subdivision. A land contract is also referred to as a Mm, a land contract is also referred to as a I'd say I'd say an option contract. Damn. Installment contract. A land contract is also referred to as an installment contract. A land contract is also is also referred to as an installment contract. A land contract is also referred to as an installment contract. An integrated club refused to sell a property to a person because of that person's race. The person that sued the club. Is the club justified for his actions? So it's not C or D because yes, it says yes, and that's not right. No, no, 
No, because an integrated club is no special exclusion. No, because there's no exceptions in the exceptions in the fair law regarding race. Correct. It's got to be it. Yep, that's correct. With an exception of real estate taxes, lien are generally repaid at a foreclosure sale based on the recording date of the lien. I'm pretty sure. Yep, based on the recording date of the lien. Which of the which would be the best example of a buffer zone? Garden apartments between a residential area and a shopping center, a warehouse between two office parks, an office park between two residential properties, a residential property between two office parks. Uh, I'd say. I'd say garden apartments between a residential area and shopping center. Yep, that's it. Which of the following transactions would be governed by securities law? Laws. Securities laws. A broker selling shares in a real estate investment trust, REIT. Yep. Which of the following transactions would be governed by securities laws? A broker selling shares in a real estate trust, REIT. Which of the following transactions would be governed by securities laws? A broker selling shares in real estate investment trust, REIT. A seller and buyer have agreed to a sales contract. The buyer backs out of the agreement. Which of the following could the seller not do? So, yeah, he can definitely sue for specific performance. He can definitely rescind the agreement. He can definitely sue for compensatory damage, but he cannot file for a writ of execution. Let's see. Yep, that is true. A seller and buyer have agreed to a sales contract. The, the buyer backs out of the agreement, which the following could the seller not do file for a writ of execution, which of the following constitutes illegal commingling by a licensee. A salesperson deposits earnest money into a broker's trust account. I'm pretty sure that's the one. Broker deposits commercial rent receipts from a property manager's into a trust account. Salesperson deposits residential rental money into a trust account. Broker deposits payroll funds into a trust account. Hmm. Try to throw you off right there. Broker deposits and a salesperson deposits. So I think it'd be salesperson. Damn it. Broker deposits payroll funds into a trust account. I was wrong. Okay. Which of the following constitutes illegal, illegal commingling by a licensee? Broker deposits payroll funds into a trust account. Which of the following constitutes illegal commingling by a licensee? Broker deposits payroll funds into a trust account. Broker can never deposit payroll funds into a trust account. This will always be commingling. A salesperson may deposit earnest money into a broker's trust account. Okay, so you can't. Oh, I, all right, then. How would prepaid taxes with a mid-year closing show up on a closing statement? So, prepaid taxes with a mid-year closing. Show up on a closing statement. So prepaid taxes. So prepaid taxes are already paid. And the middle of the year is going to close. So the seller already paid the taxes. Hmm. Prepaid taxes with me or so. So the buyer to be a debit to the seller, I'd say so debit to the seller, credit to the seller. So the debit to the seller, credit to the buyer. No, no. Debit to the buyer, credit to the seller. Okay. Since the seller has prepaid taxes for the year and we have a mid-year closing, the buyer will owe the seller for the buyer's fair share. Hence, we debit the buyer and credit to the seller. Since the seller has a prepaid taxes for the year and we have a mid-year closing, the buyer will owe the seller for the buyer's fair share. So how would prepaid taxes 
with the mid-year closing show up on the closing statement. Debit buyer, credit to seller. An appraiser should lend most validity to the market data approach on which of the following properties. Vacant land, I say? Yeah, vacant land. An appraiser should lend most validity to the market data approach on which of the following properties, vacant land. Which approach to value would an appraiser be using when one adds the land value to the depreciated replacement cost of the property? Uh, what, the cost approach? Yeah, the cost approach. A person has a has had a mental disability in the past, but has recovered and is now mentally competent. Which statement is true under the nineteen eighty eight Fair Housing Amendments Act? Uh, nineteen eighty eight Act does not cover any disability. Nineteen eighty eight does not cover any mental disability. This person would not be covered as this person would be covered as nineteen eighty eight Act applies to any person whether uh, any it applies to any disability whether a person is recovered or not. Yep. All the closing documents should be prepared in accordance with the terms of sales contract. Yep. All closing documents should be prepared in accordance with the terms of the sales contract. A property that contains recessos and salation wrapped around pipes would be best, best remedied by encapsulation. Yep. When does a sales contract become legally binding for the buyer? Okay, when does a sales contract become legally binding for the buyer when the seller accesses is communicated back to the buyer? When the offer is made, no. When the offer is presented to the seller, no. When the offer is accepted by the seller, it's communicated back to the buyer, yep. Yeah, when the seller's acceptance is communicated back to the buyer. A purchase agreement was ex was accepted with earnest money given as part of the contract. The broker deposited the earnest money in the broker's escrow account. How would the earnest money appear on the closing statement? Oh, here we go again. Purchase agreement was accepted with earnest money given as part of the contract. So the broker it deposited the earnest money in the escrow account. So earnest money... How would earnest money appear on the closing statement? Earnest money would all uh, would be so it's leaving the the the, the buyer's pocket. So it'd be a credit to the buyer. Credit to the buyer. No entry for the seller because the the sell, yeah. So he's just depositing. Earnest okay, so I think it's that one. Credit to the buyer, no entry for the seller. Yep. The earnest money is a credit to the buyer only and does not appear on the seller statement. The seller gets credited for full for the full sale price of the property. This credit to the buyer simply shows the buyer receives the earnest money and is applying this amount to the purchase price. A buyer and seller negotiated a sale whereby the seller was to include all kitchen appliances. Upon moving in, the buyer discovered that the seller has taken all kitchen appliances. What would be the buyer's best remedy? Declare the contract invalid? No. The buyer is out of luck? Nope. Is the buyer negotiating himself? No. Sue the seller for partial performance? No. Sue the seller for specific performance? Yes. Yep, that's it. An exclusive right to sell listing is given by an owner to a broker. Which of the following would be required? of the owner wait an exclusive right to sell listing is given to it given by an owner to a broker which of the following would be required of the owner to pay the broker a commission upon completion of the sale of property i think so pay the broker no exclusive, exclusive right to sell so this has got to be the one yep Pay the broker a commission upon completion of the sale of property. A buyer made an offer on a property that 
on a property, a broker had listed, the broker presented the offer to the seller while the seller was still considering the offer, the buyer contacted and informed the broker that the buyer wanted to withdraw the offer. The broker should Wait, a buyer made an offer on a property a broker had listed. The broker presented the offer to the seller. While the seller was still considering the offer, the buyer contacted and informed the broker that the buyer wanted to withdraw the offer. Continue, the broker should continue to market the property for the seller, yeah. Yep, that's the one. What is the purpose of earnest money being part of a real estate contract? Without it being, there would be no consideration. No, it gives the broker commission money in case the buyer is not closed. No, it establishes the intent of the buyer to carry out the contract. Yes. It provides the payment of some of the buyers. Nope. So, yeah, it establishes the intent of the buyer to carry out the contract. Yep. A listing agent presents a contingency offer from a buyer to the seller. The offer contains language that says if the seller accepts the offer, the buyer will put their home on the market within 24 hours. This is good for the sellers. This would expose the buyer's property on the market within a short time frame. Yep. An owner of an eightplex wants to advertise for seniors only. The building does not have any special facilities for older persons. In order for the owner to do this, at least 80% of the units must be occupied by a person who is at least 55 years old. I'm pretty sure. Yep, 55. Which instrument indicates involuntary alienation? Hmm, so... Involuntary is something like it's not voluntary. <laughs> so, deed in law foreclosure, grant deed, quick claim deed. I'm not sure. Executive deed. If I read the financial part, then I probably would notice, but forget it. We'll go through that tomorrow. <laughs> Hmm. I want to say this is a tough one. I want to say deed and loud foreclosure or quick claim, quick claim deed. I'd just say this one. Yes, yeah, correct. Deed and loud foreclosure. Involuntary means to transfer something without an owner's consent. A deed and loud foreclosure is used when a borrower's deed and the property to the lender in order to avoid being foreclosed upon. A grant, quick claim, and executive deed are all in, are all voluntary. Okay, so deed and lot foreclosure. Six miles of curbs and gutters were installed to improve the properties in a certain area. The properties that were improved would most likely pay for the improvements through a. I want to say a special assessment tax. Yeah, I think a special assessment tax. Yeah, correct. Which of the following statements would be the best example of puffing? Telling a buyer a home in a specific step is connected. No. Telling a buyer a property with 68. No. Telling your buyer that this home has the most beautiful view overlooking the lake. Yup. Which approach value would be the best for an apartment complex? Mm, income, I'd say. Yeah, income approach. Yep. Yeah, income approach. If a tenant stays over without the landlord's permission, this is called an estate of sufferance. From whom does a salesperson receive a commission? Salesperson's own broker. Two brothers wanted to purchase property for their parents to live and during their retirement years, the brothers wanted to take title in a mariner that limited their tax liability. As the agent is helping the brothers to purchase, what would you recommend? 
that the brothers seek advice from an attorney. Yep. Y offers X 60,000 for X's property. Which of the following terms best describes the role of X? So Y offers X. So Y is the offeror and X would be the offeree. Receiver the offer, yep. The authority the government has to require that all buildings for human living have restrooms is called police power, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, police power. How long does a person have who has been discriminated against to file a complaint with the Department of Housing and Urban Development? HUD. It's a year, I think. Yeah, it's one year. A good example of a unilateral contract would be an option contract. A, su a subordination clause in a mortgage does which of the following? Subordination clause in a mortgage does which of the following? I don't know that one. It changes the priority of the mortgages. A subordination clause in a mortgage does not does which of the following. It changes the priority of the mortgages. A subordination clause in the mortgage does which of the following. It changes the priority of the mortgages. What is the relationship between a property manager and an owner? General agency. A person bought. Oh, yeah, that's a math question. Guess. Guess time. Man, we guess a need, boy. In advertising for prospects, all of the following terms could be used except. In advertising for prospects, all the following terms could be used except. Political party affiliation, military personnel, upper bracket buyers. National origin, I think. Yeah, national origin is a protected class under the fair, fair Housing and it's legal to be used in advertising. In which of the following cases might a broker still be owed a commission on an unexpired listing? The principal terminates the listing agreement. Yep. The best way to estimate value for residential property is with an appraisal. Yep. The common areas in a condominium are owned by the unit owners under condominium area. The common areas in a condominium are owned by unit owners under hmm. Common areas in a condominium are owned by unit owners under, I'd say severalty. Okay, it was tenancy in common. Okay, okay. Common areas in a condominium are owned by unit owners under tenancy in common. Common areas in a condominium are owned by unit under owners under tenancy in common. False information was given to induce a person to enter into a contract, which of the following legal effects best describes the contract. Voidable by the misrepresented party. Yep. In appraising a property, which of the following items would have the greatest impact on value? Mm, I'd say the assessed valuation. Okay. Local economic conditions. In appraising a property, which of the following items would be the greatest impact on value? Local economic conditions. In appraising a property, which of the following items would be, have the greatest impact on value, local economic conditions? A handicapped person is asked, the a handicapped person asked the landlord for permission to alter the, the apartment. Which of the following is true regarding the cost of changing the apartment back after the termination of the lease? The landlord can require that it be restored as it was before alteration, well, yeah, I think that one's right. The landlord may raise the security deposit to cover renovation costs. No, it could require a tenant to move out. Move. 
form will no, the federal government will reimburse the land with no. So I think it's A. A broker acting as a property manager usually indicates which type of agency. A general, an agent bought, brought an offer to a seller with the seller counter offering back to the buyer. In the meantime, another offer was brought to the seller with terms more favorable to the seller. The, be the seller's best option would be to, let's see, refund the first counter offer before it says it's an accepted better offer. I'm pretty sure that's the one. In a contract for deed, when does a buyer receive the deed to the property? Okay, when the contract is signed, when the deed is recorded, when the contract is recorded, when the payment, let me see, when the deed is signed, I'd say. No, when the payment obligations is paid in full. In a contract for deed, when does a buyer receive the deed to the property? When the payment obligation is paid in full. In a contract for deed, when does the finance, when does the, In the contract for deed, when does the buyer receive the deed to the property when the payment obligation is paid in full? A contract whereby either party is able to sue the, the other party would be classified as unenforceable. Which of the following would be true regarding special assessment taxes? These are also uh, if not paid the party. I'd say they're paid one time at closing. Uh, is there after land taxes? No. Okay. If, the, if not paid, the property could be sold at a foreclosure sale. Which of the following would be true regarding special assessment taxes? If not paid, the property could be sold at a foreclosure sale. Which of the following would be true regarding special assessment taxes? If not paid, the property would be sold at a foreclosure sale. Which of the following would, it, would allow a lender to legally reject a loan for a residential house that was in good repair? Which one would allow the lender to legally reject? Which one would allow the lender to legally reject a loan for residential for a residential house that was in good repair? The buyer had been recently divorced. No, the house was located in my no. The house was located in the area primarily for light industrial. The buyer was so I'd say B. That's common sense right there. A broker signs an exclusive right to sell listing with an owner. The next day, the owner talks to another broker about listing the same property. What should the broker's response to the owner? Uh, I can, no, I cannot list a property while another broker has a current exclusive listing. Which would be the font the best example of a buffer zone? An agricultural property with between the multi. Uh, multi-family and commercial property, a single family property to, between two commercial property, a single family property between multi-family dwelling and commercial property, a park between a high-rise apartment building and industrial area. What is the main difference between a freehold estate and a non-freehold estate? Freehold estate always involves ownership. I'd say, yeah, freehold estate always involves ownership. Yep. Next question. Are repairing literally and prior appropriation all relate to water rights? Yep. Okay. Great exam.